welcome dear students to the last topic of the first unit of our syllabus the history of english language and literature now in the previous class we discussed about the pre raphaelites now prior to the pre raphaelites we discussed about the victorian poetry and some of the important poets of the victorian period we talked about alfred lord tennyson robert browning and matthew arnold and today the last topic we shall discuss about the aestheticians aestheticians or the decadents so who are these group of people or this group of artists or poets known as the aestheticians or the decadents so naturally the question that will come to our mind is what is the meaning of aesthetics what is the meaning of aesthetics now aesthetics is a set of principles concerned with the nature and appreciation of beauty aesthetics is a set of principles that is concerned with the appreciation of beauty now it is the branch of philosophy which deals with questions of beauty and artistic taste so aesthetics means something to do with beauty and artistic taste now what is the general meaning of the term aestheticians of so aesthetics we have seen aesthetician so aesthetician is a person who is knowledgeable about aesthetics so one who knows about aesthetics or one who has some kind of taste towards beauty uh, artistic uh, nature etc they are known as aesthetics now our concern is who are the aestheticians in the history of english literature that is our topic who are the aestheticians in the history of english literature the aestheticians were a group of poets who had the similar ideologies as the pre raphaelites we have talked about the pre raphaelites now they also held on to the motto like the pre raphaelites art for art sake the phrase art for art sake is the translation of a french slogan the slogan uh, art for art sake is associated with the history of english art and letters with the oxford don walter pater and his followers in the aesthetic movement so uh, the slogan art for art for art sake the aestheticians movement was a was a rebelling against victorian moralism we can say so art for art sake art is only for art sake it is not meant for any kind of uh, moral judgment or teaching morality moralism means passing judgment about other people's or other person's morality art for art sake art is not for teaching morality now the artists and writers of the aesthetic movement they asserted that there was no connection between art and morality so art is not meant to teach morality there is no connection between art and morality and they held on to the view that the art should provide refined sensuous pleasure so art is meant for refined sensuous pleasure not to teach morality rather than conveying moral or sentimental messages art is for sensuous pleasure they did not accept john ruskin and matthew arnold who would say who would have a utilitarian conception of art as something useful or something moral so these people ruskin and matthew arnold would say art is meant to teach morality and the usefulness of art in teaching moral principles but the aestheticians they would say art is meant for art sake most of the victorians believed that literature provided models for right behavior and prompted people to act morally in society but the aestheticians those who supported aestheticism believed that art had art had nothing to do with morality they believed that art was mainly about the elevation of taste and the pure pursuit of beauty the sensuous pleasure of art they said that i should be judged on the basis of form rather than morality so there is no moral duty from the part of the art or there is no the, the, the art is not meant to teach moral principles it meant valuing the sensual qualities of art and the sheer pleasure that they provide Uh, sensual pleasure provided by the art is the decision challenged the value system of the mainstream victorian culture so the victorian period thinking that teaching that art was meant for teach morality aestheticians completely opposite now the aestheticians they were also called as decadents they were called as decadents because 
they defied the moral conventions of the age they acted against the moral conventions of the age and thus they scandalized the victorian sentiment by loving drugs by loving drinks and indulging in sensual sensual pleasure so they were going against the currents of the times the decadents were members of a group of late 19th century french and english poets who associated with the aesthetic movement so they they would talk on to take on to sensual pleasure drugs drinks etc now who were the chief aestheticians uh, one was ernest dawson the second one was lionel johnson and the most important of them whom we will study is oscar wilde oscar wilde so in short my dear friends aestheticism or the aesthetic movement was an intellectual and artist uh, artistical movement intellectual and art movement that supported aesthetic values more than socio political themes for art music and literature their motto was art for art sake art art was meant only for enjoyment sensual pleasure art had no moral or social responsibility so this is in short aestheticism now we shall talk something about one of the foremost of the aestheticians oscar wilde now oscar wilde lived between 1854 and 1900 1854 and 1900 he lived for just 46 years now he was an oscar wilde was an irish poet and a playwright he was born in dublin his father was sir william uh, wilde he was a doctor and his mother jane was a poet in 1874 he became a scholar of uh, magdalen college in oxford now it is here that he becomes an apostle he becomes a disciple or proponent of the aesthetic movement aesthetic movement from oxford he went to london where he was the center of the artificial decadent society the proponent of aestheticism decadence he was very famous for his wit and brilliant conversations he also was imprisoned for 2 years in 1895 he died in paris at now oscar wilde Uh, he wrote poetry he wrote prose and he wrote drama in all these poetry prose and drama he shows or embodies the spirit of the decadent school he was influenced by walter pater and the uh, other pre raphaelites we know the pre raphaelites also had the same motto art for art sake now some of the characteristics of the literary style of oscar wilde it is good to know Uh, some of the important characteristics of the literary style of oscar wilde the first characteristic of oscar wilde's literature or literary works were the subject is far removed from the realities of ordinary life it does not talk about the realities of ordinary life the second one is that it lacked emotional depth it had an intellectual appeal lot of wit and intellectual appeal that was the second characteristic the third was the style was artistic and elaborately decorated ornately decorated you know these were the three characteristics of uh, oscar wilde's literature that we can remember now what are some of the poems of oscar wilde in 1881 he would publish a collection of poems under the title poems the sphinx was published in 1894 The Ballad of Reading Gall which was published in 1898 this were some of the poems of Oscar Wilde now his prose consisted of stories as well as one novel they were typical products of products of aestheticism the prose writings of Oscar Wilde they were ingenious very clever witty polished and ornamental in style his prose writings they were mainly intellectual and lacked any human warmth so these were some of the characteristics of his prose now some of some of the important uh, prose writings of oscar wilde they were the first one which was published in 1887 lord arthur saville's crimes that was the first one published in 1887 the canterville ghost was published again in 1887 the happy prince and the other tales it was published in 1888 and in 1890 he would publish the picture of dorian gray now this is the only novel the picture of dorian gray published in 1890 was the only novel by oscar wilde and as and in 1897 he would publish de profundis oscar wilde is well remembered for his dramas for his plays 
He is regarded as one of the greatest playwrights of the Victorian era. You know, the most important genre of Victorian era was novel. Now, he is considered as the, the greatest of the playwrights. Now, some of his plays are uh, Vera or the Nihilist, which was published in 1880, The Duchess of Padua, which was printed in 1883, and Salome, which was published in 1892. These were some of the plays. Now, Oscar Wilde is renowned for four of his great uh, comedies. These four comedies brought him a lot of reputation. Now, which are those four comedies that brought great reputation, reputation to Oscar Wilde? The first one, which was published in 1892, is Lady Windermere's Fan, which was published in 1892. Now, in 1893, he would publish A Woman of No Importance, A Woman of No Importance. And in 1895, he will publish An Ideal Husband. And the most important of all, the best of them all, the important importance of being earnest was published in 1895. Now that is the most renowned uh, comedy of uh, Oscar Wilde. Now all the four comedies were very popular and all of them belong to the comedy of manners sonar genre, the comedy of manners genre. Now he is portraying all these comedies through all these comedies, he is portraying the elegance and ease of the upper classes of his day. So he is depicting the upper classes. He is different from his contemporaries in the sense that he is not worried about the moral implications of his place. So he is not worried about the literature is not meant for teaching morality. He is not worried about the moral implication of the place. All the characters are intellectual. There is very little of human warmth. The popularity of the play rests on the dialogue and the entertaining wit, the scintillating wit, they would say. So he was not very much worried about the moral side of his place. So my dear students, this was the last topic, the aestheticians that we discussed about, the last topic of our first unit. We are coming to the end of this short lecture on Oscar Wilde and the aestheticians. Now Oscar Wilde, to recap recapitulate, uh, Oscar Wilde was uh, the representative of the aestheticians or the decadence who believed that art was for art's sake. Art did not have any moral or social obligations. He did not live very long and uh, he did not live a morally upright life as well. He was a homosexual and was accused of influencing young men into gay life. So he did not propagate morality in his life. He did not live a moral life. All his plays he was not worried about the moral side was never worried about the moral side in his place. Now he is considered as one of the most important playwrights of the Victorian period and his four plays of the genre of the comedy of manners is renowned. And the best of them as I said is the importance of being earnest. So my dear students this is something about aestheticians and Oscar Wilde for your, for your assignment. Please write a short description about uh, aestheticism, the aestheticians or the decadence and please write about the literary works of Oscar Wilde, especially the four important comedies of Oscar Wilde. Thank you for your patient listening. Have a wonderful time. Please have a joyful learning.